Welcome back to News Now on PNC. So if you hear a loud explosion next Tuesday or Wednesday, don't be alarmed. A multi-agency exercise will be held to test the island's emergency response capabilities. PNC's Betsy Brown has more on the exercise, but first, be warned, some of the images, which are from the last exercise, are graphic. Terroristic scenarios will be played out as if it were real life next week as local and federal agencies team up to take part in Exercise Contra e Peligro. Governor Eddie Calvo says the multi-agency event will prepare Guam for the unexpected. Take a look at what's going on around the world. Look what happened in Paris. Uh, you know, we have to look at real life, real time, what is the situation occurring worldwide. And Guam, uh, being a very, you know, again, American community, uh, a very strategic, uh, important uh, defense installation for the United States, uh, we, you know, we potentially are a pretty, uh, how would you say, high value target. Several explosions may be heard throughout the island during the course of the 48 hour exercise. When you think uh, of, of this contrary peligro, uh, we're going to be involving chemical, biological, radiological, and high yield explosives. Uh, all that's going to be occurring throughout the island. U.S. Army Pacific Readiness and Training Division Director Ray Tobes says the actual scenarios that will be in the exercise are only known by trusted agents so far, as the event is meant to identify gaps and shortfalls in the island's emergency response capabilities. Homeland Security Advisor Ambrosio Constantino says gaps identified in the 2013 exercise became priorities in training events afterwards. What we started doing was we started going to the schools and we started giving active shooter training. So we started training not just the public schools but also the private schools as well on active shooter. Contra e Peligro begins Tuesday morning. Betsy Brown, PNC News. The Joint Guam Program Office, or JIGPO, has a new forward director. Navy Commander Daniel Sean took the helm of Guam's JIGPO office just 10 days ago. But he says he's looking forward to continuing the mission of JIGPO, which is to facilitate, manage, and execute the requirements of the environmental impact statement that is required for the Guam military buildup. DOD already completed an EIS for the buildup, but is now in the final stages of its supplemental EIS. The JIGPO director says the SEIS should be released by early this year. Today I was uh, granted the opportunity to meet with the Mayor's Council of Guam. Very unique and uh, privileged experience. I welcomed them to engage the JIGPO office and to be available and to ensure that we have transparency and we conduct ourselves in keeping with the Navy's core values of honor, courage and commitment. My bride, Linda, and my dependents and I are very excited to be here. We're, we've lived in Houston for many, many years, and so we're very excited to be here because with the climate and the people, it's the summer that never ends. Commander Sean says the record of decision for the SEIS should also be released this year as well. An illegal dump near the Jonia Mayor's office that created an eyesore for library patrons has been cleaned up. The dump started as a staging area for the village recycling program, but quickly got out of control. Jonia Mayor Ken Joe Adda says people began dumping items there that could not be recycled. When PNC asked the mayor about the large pile of trash in December, he said he'd have it cleaned up by the end of January, and he stayed true to his word. Ada says JMC Equipment donated trucks to haul the trash away from the site, and members of the community helped as well. He adds that Senator Roy Respicio's office is working with him to prevent this from happening in his or any other village in the future. One of the things that I was recommending is that uh, each mayor's offices get a, 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 a container, uh, you know, that's designated for these white goods so we can load them up and, you know, it's, it's, it's storaged and packed away so once it's full they can haul it away. So I believe that's uh, one of the options they're exploring through that office, uh, through his office. All that remains of the pile today is some debris, which Mayor Ada says he'll rake and throw away this week. Two trucks sitting at the site are also going to be hauled away in the coming days. The holiday spirit will be spread through food, clothing and music events thanks to pledges signed by three businesses this morning. San Francisco-based restaurant Perbetu, Guam-style clothing and Obro's Entertainment all signed the Guam Visitors Bureau's holiday pledge this morning. Obro's Entertainment promised to include more cultural aspects in their next Trench Fest event. 
Guam Style Clothing pledged to unite Chamorros throughout the world through the positive messages on their clothing. And Perbetu says they'll continue to teach their customers in California about Guam. We, uh, of course, use the Coco Bird as our logo, um, do everything we can to spread um, any information about our culture. Um, anytime someone comes in and um, tries something delicious from Chef, uh, they always ask in what or, or you know where this came from. And we're more than happy to put that dish into context and give them some sort of frame. And um, a lot of that has to do with you know our colonial past or, or even our, our ancient past. And uh, we're very very happy to do that. Representatives from the businesses taking the pledge today will also be participating in a beach cleanup later this week. All right, well, here's Joanna O oh with the latest in weather. Today was an exciting day for me. I know many schools already started their semesters like in second week of January, but it was my first day of school for 2015 spring semester. For this day, I prayed very hard, asking God, be gracious enough to allow cute guys in my class. <laughs> true story, true prayer, but did it come true? Secret. Welcome to Local Weather Forecast. I'm Joanna O. Oh. Warnings first. The National Weather Service says High Surf Advisory might need to extend its expiration time, so please keep yourself updated on marine warnings if you're planning on going out to the waters. Let's go take a look at weather. Expect partly cloudy with isolated showers today with wind speed of around 5 to 10 miles per hour. But tomorrow, it will be mostly cloudy with isolated showers. The winds are expected to build up and blow at speed of around 10 to 20. Then on Friday, it is expected to be back to partly cloudy with isolated showers with winds blowing around 10, about 10 miles per hour. Temperatures will vary within 78 to 88 for the three-day forecast, as you can see on the slides here. That's it for me, but stay tuned for more on sports now with Mr. Watson here on PNC.